In our first microphone test video, we went inside a garage to listen to the acoustic reverberation of everything and hear how the four different microphones sounded. Now we are outside, um, right outside the garage actually, and uh, we're gonna be testing those same four microphones and you let us know what you think of the sound of these microphones. So before we get into any of the outside testing, I want to introduce to you a buddy of mine who is a production sound mixer here in Arizona. Hello, my name is Adam Hecht. I've been a production sound mixer since 2018 and I've been a Foley artist since 2014. You can find me and my work examples and everything at linktree.com slash Ash Sound LLC. And that is A-S-H Sound LLC. Special thanks to Audio Department for sending us this uh, DPA 2017 to test. It sounds amazing, thank you guys. For this test, we're going to be doing two at a time. So the first one we're looking at right here is the DPA 2017. And I'm listening back to it right now, right? You're listening back to it right cool. now and also it is currently in a Sonella Cozy uh, windscreen. This is what my voice sounds like, I'd say arm length away. But what if I get a little bit closer to it now? And I'm speaking directly to you guys. Now my voice sounds really clear, right? Because of proximity and all that. Um, the microphone is kind of pointed at my nose at the moment, so it may sound a little nasally. What do you think? What do you think, Adam? Did it sound kind of nasal? A little bit. But... A little bit. Tilt it down a little bit. Yeah. Cool, cool. So now my voice, yeah, I can definitely hear the sensation. And now if I step back over here. And a little adjustment. Yep. Now if I step back over here, you can, oh, as I step on the leaves. It's all good. Right? And now as I'm probably two arm lengths away, this is how my voice sounds two arm lengths away from the microphone. So let me know in the comments what you hear. And um, what I hear right now is I like the, the narrowness, how, how specific the microphone is capturing the flat response from my voice. Keeping in mind that DPA microphones have a flat frequency response. They're not, they don't raise frequencies in the higher or the lower end of the frequency spectrum. So that's a really important thing to know about DPA microphones because it'll help you in post-production whenever you are doing uh, post sound mixing, um, EQing or anything like that. So I do like the way this is just really natural. I'm gonna start walking closer and closer and yeah, so far, I'm liking the way that's sounding. Let's say there's a scene where I'm far away, way over here, and I step on leaves again. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a wall right next to me and a window, nothing here. So there might be some audio waves bouncing off of this wall. And if I were to, let's say, speak over here, hello, how's it going? You can definitely hear the echo and the reverb bouncing off the window going to the microphone. And then if I'm to turn around over here, you can definitely pick up that narrowness, the, the directionality from the DPA 2017. Now, let me spin and go this way. I'm talking outside to the outside world, um, and I can definitely hear a lot more openness. How, how would you describe it, Adam? What are you hearing? Uh, I'm still hearing it's now, of course, you don't really often want to be this far away no. from the mic. Um, I'm hearing it's definitely more open, but because you're also getting all the stuff behind you too. Fair, fair. Um, and then the wind and everything. And I'm gonna start walking back over to here and now my voice will be the same proximity as yeah. that one. Because it's all about placement, that if you're gonna go that far, you're gonna wanna do a lob. Let me yeah. just adjust this back to us. <laughs> so yeah, it's all about getting closer. And I'm finding that it still sounds a lot uh, more natural, but of course, if this were a real situation, the farther Jeffrey would go, we would be turning up the gain a yeah. little bit yeah. to adjust. We did not adjust the gain because we're trying to keep everything consistent. Exactly, but that just goes to show that because the shotgun microphone still sounded um, fairly like crisp with how far away it even was, the directionality of the DPA 2017 is super important. Compared to if you were gonna use like a pencil microphone. Um, Sennheiser MKH-50, praise that microphone, I praise it, but it wouldn't be as efficient for how far away I was or am from, yep. from that microphone. There will be more videos on the Sennheiser MKH-50, so subscribe to stay tuned for those down the road. Now we're looking at uh, the classic for you, uh, the S Deity S Mic 2. Oh my gosh, the Deity S Mic 2. Andrew, if you're watching this, Hello, how's it going? <laughs> Good to see you at the NAB show. Um, this is the longer shotgun microphone they have. Not the short one, that's the S-Mic 2S, but the longer one, the S-Mic 2. And the microphone is right up against the brick wall, so I can hear a little bit of um, bounce back. 
A little bit. Let me fix that a little bit. Yeah. I miss. Don't mind us. So right now I'm about maybe one and a half, maybe two arm lengths away from the capsule. I'm going to move a little bit closer. And now I am exactly one arm length away, and this is what my voice sounds like. Um, I like the tone so far. I think it's a little too bassy in my, in, for my ears right now, based on the way compared to what the DPA sounded like. But what if I get a little bit closer to it now? And I'm speaking directly to you guys. Now my voice sounds really clear, right? It definitely is rejecting a lot of the noise we're hearing from the outside. So if I'm just speaking, I know some birds are chirping in the background. There's some, the wind of the, the leaves and the trees. Can't really hear that as much, so that's good. The directionality of this microphone is dead center and uh, towards my mouth. What if I back up just a little bit? Now I'm probably like three arm lengths away. I'm gonna back up just a little bit more, keeping at the same gain and stepping on some more leaves. <laughs> In this case, you would definitely want to use a lab microphone, but for this video and the pr purpose of this video, um, this is what the DDS Mic 2 sounds like. I want to say like five to six arm lengths away, maybe feet. Now I'm going to start walking to the microphone. I'm probably about, mm, I'd say two and a half arm lengths away, coming back to exactly one arm length away. So I really like the sound of this. Um, and at first it was kind of um, phasey, like it, the audio waves were bouncing off the brick wall that was right next to here. And the microphone is right up against the brick wall so I can hear a little bit of, um, but since we adjusted it in a way, now it's it, it sounds really um, even, like nicely balanced, nothing. I don't feel that anything is like really uh, bouncing off, maybe a little bit off the brick wall, but for the most part, it sounds pretty good. I am noticing in the sound, um, it's not as clear as far as the voice is concerned. There's okay. a little bit of, it's not as clean as, you know, as the DPA was with picking your voice out. I agree. I agree. I would equate it to, for the people that might know, listening to an analog signal in mm. wireless transmission, an analog signal versus a digital signal. Where digital signal is like a lot more clean versus the analog, which can be a little fuzzy. There's a tiny bit of a, almost like a little fuzz in the voice, I'm noticing. I can hear that too, especially considering you're like right on the side of the microphone, so yeah. right where the isolation would take place. Um, and then you can hear me. Yep, and you can hear me. Yep. But, uh, but specifically to your voice yes. is what I'm hearing that. Yeah, definitely understand that. And uh, once I listen back to this a little bit more in post-production, I'll probably catch on to a little bit more details. But yeah, this is how the Deity S Mic 2 sounds like. We're using again, what Zaxcom um, mixer is this? The Zaxcom Max. Now let's get on to the last two microphones. So I'm now speaking into the Sennheiser MKH416. This is the Sennheiser shotgun microphone that almost everybody in the industry knows about. And yeah, we have it in a right coat blimp because why not? <laughs> anyway, That's so what I have, man. <laughs> so my arm is currently one arm length away, and this is how my voice sounds like with the Sennheiser MKH416. And now, if I back away just a little bit more, like one footstep. So now, let's say that's like two and a half, maybe arm lengths away. Um, and what's the gain level again, Adam? We are at plus 10 dB. Cool. Yeah. Plus 10 dB gain. This is what my voice sounds like. I really like the the dynamics of it, the clarity. Stepping back one more footstep onto the leaves. Some ASMR for you. Yeah, this is what my voice sounds like, and it sounds still pretty, pretty uh, beefy. I really like the presence that the microphone is providing me, just based on the raw recording so far. If I go one more step away, let's see how it sounds. Because we're right next to a wall, the audio waveforms are bouncing off of that and approaching me, so. The audio is definitely colored. It's not, it doesn't sound as natural. Um, it sounds like you're in like a little bubble in a sense. So this is what my voice sounds like maybe six to seven arm lengths away. But if I go maybe three feet forward, this is what it sounds like now. And then if I go really close, one arm length away, this is what my voice sounds like there. But if I were to turn, let's say right here, this is what my voice sounds like you can kind of hear muffledness, more muffledness in like the middle and like the mid frequency range compared to if I were to, to um, turn straight towards the microphone, now the clarity is there. And now let's turn this way towards the open world. I can definitely hear more of the bass frequencies mixed along with the mid frequencies. Definitely sounds kind of muddy to me. Um, not much of the higher end frequencies there. But again, if I turn here, the higher end frequencies suddenly appear. 
very more transparent. I want to demonstrate also what the current environment we're currently filming in. Sure. And this blimp allows us to do so pretty easily. So Adam has just taken away the right coat blimp, so now it's going to sound a little bit more natural. Here, I am about one and a quarter arm length away. Stepping back, I hear one. This is what my voice sounds like. Definitely a lot more reverb coming out of that because now the audio waveforms are bouncing off the wall to my mouth. And then one more step back. And as I'm listening to it, you can still hear the presence of my vocal. However, you're still hearing more bounce back from the audio waveforms coming off the wall to my mouth. And that you can definitely hear that more on this side compared to this side. Um, it definitely sounds very phasey, like one more step back. And in this case, you would definitely use a lab microphone. Don't trust the shotgun mic to pick it up from this far away. We're also, again, recording at plus 10 decibels of gain. So honestly, for what this is, if you only had like a small independent crew, you work on a film challenge, had a very micro budget set, this would not be a bad idea if you don't want to put the money into lab microphones and you want to trust like maybe Adobe Podcast Enhancers AI program, might not be a bad idea. But you still don't want to take your chances with that. It's just an idea. Now I'm going to go a little bit more closer. Now you can really start to hear how my voice sounds. And now I'm going to walk back a little bit more, a little bit more, still walking back. Now you can hear how my voice sounds reverb rise. And now I'm going to walk even closer, closer, closer. You can hear my voice. And now I'm going to be directly in front of it. So this is really, um, you know, very, what's the word? Frazzling. Yeah, very uh, bassy, very broadcasty. Very, very bassy, yes. Um, and then if you were to do any voiceovers, this would be like a really good distance to be from the microphone as well. Oh, yeah. Let's move on to the next microphone. So you are now listening to the Senkin CS3E. Um, I don't know Senkin much for their shotgun microphones, but I'm happy to be testing this out. So this is what it sounds like an arm length away. And um, so far, I do like it. It's I can hear it kind of gets rid of the lower frequencies, kind of focuses on the mid-ish frequencies, like maybe around like 300 to 500, and then it kind of goes towards the 2K to 5K, like rises up there. Could be wrong about that, but that's just what I'm hearing right now from the raw audio. I do not hear any um, bounce back from the wall so far. It's, it sounds pretty natural to my ears. Now I'm gonna go, let's see, three steps back. Got some wind noise there. Yeah, we got some wind noises there for sure, unfortunately. <laughs> Enjoy that ASMR. Wow. So there's, I would say, a pro and con to every microphone. That could also just be the accessory we're using. Not yeah. Good. Right now, my voice, I can still hear a little bit of clarity within the, the high frequency range, maybe 5 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. Um, the bass is definitely like flown out from my ears. Can't really hear much of the bass at all. Maybe just a little bit. It sounds very thin, but I can hear just, just a little bit of it. Again, at this point, audio waveforms bouncing off the wall, coming over here. I'm um, gonna walk maybe one, two, three steps away. So now I am really far away, and this is how my voice sounds. It's very, very echoey, obviously, and this is when you would use a lab microphone. Don't trust the boom mic or shotgun mic from far away at this distance, okay? Use the lab microphone, whatever you got. Now I'm going to start walking towards the microphone. You can hear that the presence of my voice is getting more clear and crisp. And now I'm pretty much an arm length away, and it doesn't sound as, like, um, explosive, I should say. I like how the sank in. It's a nice, natural feel. It's a nice, it's a very natural approach whether I'm in front of it, far away, or even super close to it. Yeah, no, I don't feel like my ears tingling in a sense. Though at that far away distance, it was a lot cleaner than the other mics. Fair, it, it was a is, lot cleaner. The reach was definitely farther. Yes, so this is the Sankin CS3E. Thank you, Adam, for letting me use this microphone for the uh, microphone test. Thank you, Zaid, for allowing us to use it. Yes, thank you, Zaid. If you guys know Zaid, you guys know him. He's a great sound mixer. By the way, Zaid, if you're watching this, Beat LA. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on all the microphones so far? You're still listening to the Sankin shotgun microphone. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the frequency responses. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go check out some other ones.